poor black neighborhoods of this segregated city, someone gets shot roughly every two and a half hours. I'm here to find out why the violence is so bad and why it seems to be getting worse. I'm at Mount Sinai Hospital, which is Chicago's largest and busiest trauma unit. Apparently, there were three people in this car who were shot at. You can see the cars riddled with bullets. So they managed to drive themselves to hospital. This is the second shooting in the space of an hour. And in many ways, this is a normal Friday night in Chicago. This spring, shootings are up 84%. From what I can see, there are 10 bullet holes in the car. Two of them are at head height, and they're pretty big. This wasn't a small handgun they used at all. A shocked relative tells me violence is affecting everybody in the community. Where's the love? You can't go to a park. You can't go get something to eat. You can't ride the bus. A little girl just got shot in Humboldt Park a week ago on her way to school. It's heartbreaking. When is it going to stop? 14 people have been wounded in street violence in Chicago, including six shootings within a two-hour span early today. Guiding me through this neighborhood is a man who's trying to stop the violence. Chicago has hit a rough spot. It's kind of dangerous on these streets right now. Lee Daniel lives in Chicago's west side. He's a former gang member who served 15 years in jail. That's behind him now. Well, right now, I'm laid off, you know, and uh, I'm doing side jobs. I take people to the grocery stores, drive a little cab, you know, but my passion is violence prevention. Lee is a violence interrupter. His aim is to stop tense situations on the streets from escalating. He's on his way to a prayer vigil for a young man called Sean Gooden, who's just been murdered. So tell me about this uh, young, young boy that... that... Got shot. It's just a couple of days, he said. Yeah, he got killed. Somebody shot him. I really don't know why, but every other week somebody was getting killed. I'm talking about running up behind you on the street, shooting you in the head. Yes. Sean was an influential member of a local gang called the Conservative Vice Lords. Lee's afraid they'll want revenge for his death. Most shits are running high, so. That's why when we turn this corner, please cut the light out, OK? Sean's friends and fellow gang members have gathered outside his home. <laughs> Sean was a drug dealer and gang leader, killed three days before his 25th birthday. He was well known and liked by many in the community. One of his neighbors sees the vigil and realizes for the first time that he's dead. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. It's part of me that at times feels like with the amount of violence here that people must just get used to it. But seeing that woman's reaction, there's no way to get used to seeing someone so young who's been shot. Lee's worried. At least one of Sean's friends has turned up to the vigil with a weapon. The boy with the yellow jacket is hiding a gun under his belt. You see the gun? They have guns out here like that. They ready. This is a high tension situation. Yes. How do you deal with people who are this emotional? Before I go into a situation, I have to calm myself down. Because how can I calm someone else down if I'm not calm? Mm. Billy, what's up? Well, I told you I'm paying respect to Big Sean, man. Yeah, yeah we finna move yeah. around for the police in the day. Y'all be careful, too. I love you. All right. All right. I know for sure it's going to be a retaliation. Sean's mum, Bridget, comes out. She works as a hospital administrator and was at work when she found out about his death. I called his phone again there. So Ten minutes later, I got a text. They text me back and say, the buddy you're looking for is dead. Ha, 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 one up on us. Oh, my. Yeah. Ah. So I knew at that point my baby was dead. Oh, my yeah. God. With Sean having been so involved with his gang, do you think some of them might be looking for revenge? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. But if whoever shot my baby, 
if he was to sit at my dining room table right now, you know the text I sent back to him? I said, God bless you and your mother, because that was my son. Sean's enemies posted messages on his Facebook page, mocking him and his gang. Now these pictures are being shared, these threats are being shared. I just actually just wrote Facebook to deactivate my son's account. If it had stayed up, that page, do you think it would have led to more deaths? Definitely. Definitely, because they mad. Mm. I'm mad. But do I got the heart to go out and kill somebody? No. Do somebody do? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Come in. Thank you. By the time we leave, Lee is on good terms with everyone. He says it's an important part of how he does his job. The community calls us. They call you before they call the police. Yes, some, sometimes they do. And that's not a knock at the police. They just don't want someone going to jail first, you know. So when we get to these incidents, conflicts, we try and stop them from escalating before someone do go to jail or go to the hospital or even be killed. Lee used to be employed by the city as a violence interrupter. But Chicago is in the middle of a financial crisis, and he was made redundant. This is Shay Lee. <laughs> Look at my rabbits. Look. I want to know how his wife, Lashan, feels about him putting himself in the firing line. Nice to meet you. I'm Shay. I think he takes it over. Right. If we could be driving down the street, and if he sees the fight, he's going to stop, put on his jacket, and go save someone. You think he should stop? Especially now. Mm -hmm. Why? You're not getting paid. <laughs> You're not a police officer. You're not. And I'm not trying to be now. You're not. It seems like it. It just seems like it. I don't know. I know you have you a know. passion for it, but you know, I just, I just think it's overboard. I'm trying to save a life. Oh, I like that. Uh, I'm serious. I'm serious too. Sean's case should be simple. He was shot in public in front of witnesses, as in many of Chicago's homicides. But many witnesses are too scared to come forward, and they don't trust the police. Only 25% of murders here are solved. High-profile cases of police brutality have made things worse. This means the role of community violence prevention workers is key. We got more killings right now and shootings. Danye Smith works for a city agency called Ceasefire, Lee's former employer. After funding cuts, Danye is now the only violence interrupter in Englewood, a neighborhood notorious for shootings. Yeah, so what's going on around here then at the moment? Why can't we get out the car? Because it's a war zone, we got like a 30, 40 block radius of guys killing each other every day, like killing each other. These were majority of murders happening. Like Lee, Danier used to be a gang member. Now he's trying to keep the neighborhood safe. It's very dangerous for kids going to and from school. This is my niece's right here walking home. Right here. Hey. How's it going? Squeeze in. How was school? Good. Yeah? You learn a lot? Yes. Good. So how many blocks is it from school to home? I'll say about four. Four blocks. Not that far. Yeah, well, Daniel didn't want to see you out on the streets. Do you ever feel like you could end up getting hit by a stray bullet or something? Yeah. All you have to just stop and duck. Yeah, stop and duck. Yeah. Is that what they teach you? <laughs> stop and duck. Wow. Sweet little girls, but God, drop and duck is not the kind of advice you'd expect them to have to learn at school. The most important part of a violence interrupter's job is gaining the trust of those most likely to commit a violent crime, like Kool Aid, a local drug dealer. Two weeks ago, Kool Aid nearly shot someone in a row over $10 and Danye talked him down. 
we're going to walk down the road and have a little chat. But he's explaining to me that for my safety and for his, we're going to walk on the shady side of the street rather than in the sun because there are some gangways on this side and so we can run if someone starts shooting. Within minutes, Kool-Aid's telling me how his sister was killed at her 10th birthday party. So she hopped up and tried to run to her mother when she hopped up out the flow before she could stand out, before she could stand out the way up, a bullet hit her in the back of the head. You saw it happen? But that was just the start. My daddy was the only one left for me. Where is he? Huh? He died. Um, when my sister got killed, she died March the 11th, 06. He died March the 18th, 06. All hell lost loose with all the kids. She, um, all my brothers, they start, she spending different drugs, started getting in trouble, steady going back and forth to jail. She never thought I was even going to go to college, but shit, I did it. I, and when I went to college, my brother got killed. So why you smoke so much weed? Shit. Weed helped me relax. It helped my nerves. I shake a lot, like, I be on edge all the time. It helped keep me calm. Do you know what that's called? There's a name for what you have. No, it's post-traumatic stress. Soldiers go through it. Everybody who's seen stuff like that goes through it. But they have help. But they have help. Has anybody ever told you that you are traumatized? Mm. When I was in fourth grade, I tried to um, kill myself. Um, in fourth grade, I tried to commit suicide. I cut my wrist and stuff. So, um, I mean, with the lady, the counselor and stuff, come help me. But we in Chicago public school system. She only came and saw me probably like a week or something. You're just a normal guy going through traumatic situation. Why are you still out here? You know that every time, every day that you're out go. here, you're going to see another thing that's going to set but you back. Where's I'm going to go? Can I go to London with you and walk around how you walk your kids to the park? You could take your kids to the park right down the street. It's a park right here down the street. You could take your kids to that park, your kids' park. You ain't got to worry about nobody. Shoot. I can't even take my nieces and nephews to the park. When I take a female out, I got to go where white folks at. And already when I go where white folks at, they judging me how, how I look already. So now when I come here, the manager's trying to find Kool-Aid's trapped here partly by the racism he experiences elsewhere, but mostly by his own traumatic memories. Only thing I'm good at is selling drugs, though, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you're making me emotional, man. Seriously. I ain't emotional. I don't even cry no more, really, but it's, it's the way this is. You say go to the right place. Where well, is the right place? Yeah, it is my place to run, though, you know what I'm saying? Like... Speaking to Kool-Aid, I start to understand that this is a community that's traumatised. Everybody is going through psychological trauma and, and, and things that they're doing, it's how they cope with what they're going through. I've come to meet Lance Williams, a professor of urban studies. He's lived and worked in these neighbourhoods all his life. You live in communities where the schools don't work anymore, uh, there's no job, so you, you have general frustration, uh, rage because you see life passing you by. You know, guys are stressed, resorting to self-medication. You have a lot of guys that are clinically depressed, you know, and it's leading to a lot of this. And then the social media does exacerbate it because then it gives another vehicle for a culture of violence. It makes it easier to beef. Barack Obama started his political career in Chicago, and his former chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, is now the mayor. This year, he closed 47 of the city's public schools. With these kind of conditions, it doesn't matter who the president is. It's just unfortunate it's on the watch of the first African-American president. But think about this. Almost 100% of the people in the city of Chicago will agree that school closures, that policy, contributes mightily to the violence. Radio shootings across Chicago since yesterday left at least one dead and more than 20 people wounded, including drive-by shootings of the cult. Nowadays, social media is a big part of gang culture. Gang members post photos, videos, and make songs glorifying their gang and insulting their opponents. King Yella is a member of a gang called the Gangster Disciples. Today, he and his crew are making a video for their latest song. These guys are part of the Drill music scene. Drill is a kind of ultra-violent gangster rap that originated in Chicago's poor black neighborhoods. Stars of the scene aren't millionaires who rap about gangs. They're gangsters who also happen to make music. Okay. Tell me about your career. No, this music stuff changed our life, you know, give us something positive to do. You know, even though we might say some not positive things, but we still, 
not standing on the corner shooting nobody selling drugs, you feel me? But the kids who are standing on the corner shooting people and selling drugs, they're listening to you. I didn't listen. <laughs> you just said the right thing, you hear me? It's not our fault, but what, listen, we only is responsible for ourselves, nobody else. Their music is filled with references to local gangs, local neighborhoods, and petty disputes. They're called diss songs. The more provocative the song, the more likes it gets on YouTube. When you're on social media, you put a video, a video out there, put something on YouTube, these kids get involved, they start posting comments. For them, it's real. And on the streets, even though for you it's a job, on the streets, they're dying for this. As a matter of fact, turn that down. Look. They just make us seem like we just monsters and all. This is how it's made out to the world. We just monsters, man. We live regular lives too, you feel me? We ain't out here just trying to kill people, you feel me? They be like, why y'all got guns? We gonna protect ourselves because you got people out here crazy that's really out here trying to kill niggas on a daily basis, you feel me? Rio Austin is Yellow's video director. He's preparing to upload the video. Um, send it to YouTube, like upload it, you know, make sure, make sure people see it. Then he shows me a video of a rapper called Capo. Until last year, he regularly featured in diss videos on YouTube. He's lying on the ground, there's a pool of blood. Capo's fame, rivalries and death all played out online. He was one of 11 rappers murdered in the city last year. So why did he get killed? Shit, man, Chicago, man. He... The move comes after a shooting outside the club on Friday Boy night. Boy was shot the as he stood on the sidewalk at 56th and Walcott in the West End. I've joined Lee again. Ever since he met her at the vigil, he's paid regular visits to Sean's mum. Oh, this is him at his, his first graduation. They're so cute in their suits at that age because you always have to buy them so big. High school graduation picture there. But that's my grandbaby right there. Her name is going to be Peyton Rashad. Okay for this that's his kid? He's had a baby do. He had what? a baby do. Yeah. Oh. June. Oh. Yeah, May. May 1st. Oh. First week of May. He has a little girl do. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. Yeah, this is her. I didn't know that. Nah, I, I almost... It's now a week since Sean's murder. You know, but the strange part about it is, even though Sean was an active gangbanger, he didn't lose his life over gangbanging. He lost his life over trying to get a girl. Right. He was Facebook get beefing with a, get a rival gang member when he went to the store to meet this little girl. The rival gang member was in the store. They exchanged words again. Rashawn throws his hands up like, you know, F you man and leave out the store. The guy shot him in the back. My baby was shot in the back. Lee feels sure that Sean's friends are planning to retaliate. If somebody came to you, came and said, Ma, don't worry about it. I got this here. We gonna get to What would you say to him? Somebody did come to me. <laughs> See, I knew somebody came to you. Right. And I told him, y'all, you gotta stop. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. They shook their heads and said, okay, Ma. Now, whether they not do it or not, uh -huh. I don't know. Lee's got Bridget's blessing to do all he can to stop Sean's gang retaliating. But Chicago's gang culture has changed which makes his task harder. When years ago, they was all one gang. Well, they all split. Oh, not gangs now. Now they call clicks. Mm -hmm. Now you got to click on this block, a click on that block, a click on that block. So now that's how you have more conflicts now. When years ago, it was one guy that you could go to and he would stop all of it. From what you've told us about Sean in his own little way, he was responsible for the rest of the gang. Yeah. See, by him being a leader of a little small little clique, now he's going, that clique is going to run wild until the next shooter steps up in line. Lee wants to find Sean's clique before someone else gets shot. And he thinks he knows where they'll be. This is a hot spot. You never know what might happen up here. Be aware. Okay. Before long, Lee's proved right. Hey! Hey, why are you? <laughs> hey, you guys again. You, you staying safe? You staying out of trouble? Oh, uh, yeah, we, we definitely safe and well protected. Lee, are you good? 
Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you ain't tell us he was coming to the hood. If Lee's going to stop a shooting, he knows he needs to do it very soon. But the boys aren't sticking around. Later that night, Lee finds them again. That's them right there. They go to BMW. That's them in the restaurant. I seen the guys that that's gonna do the uh, retaliation. I know. Them. See, They're still out and about. They still out about one o'clock in the morning. They looking for guys. Cause those guys are shooters. Those guys got guns. And I know that. So Lee, why can't you just go up to these guys and start talking to them? You're a violence interrupter. You just can't go up to these guys, man. They know me as a violence interrupter, but I also have to respect them. I know them as shooters, so I know I, they could take my life. All it takes is one guy to say, hey, Lee, uh, what the hell you want? I done seen you so many times today. Taking a risk, he heads back to see if he can approach them. That's them right there. Yeah, I recognize him with the dreads. Mm-hmm. And they go to Big Fella. Yeah. The driver. They go to the little guy in the back. Suddenly, Lee spots something else. One of the group is on the lookout. See, they see us. Sorry, see they us. see us. They see us. And it feels like he's about to shoot. They are literally like soldiers. They're constantly looking around. You can't be anywhere near them without them seeing you. They're in the middle of a gang war right now, and a car pulling up and slowing down, people inside peering at them. That's exactly how drive-by shootings start. I might get a call later tonight or in the next few minutes, a shot's fired over there. Watch, I'm, I'm serious, because that's, that's how they play the game. Lee was right. In the weeks that follow, one of Sean's friends kills someone in a rival clique. And within 24 hours, he himself is also shot and killed. Working alone, Lee couldn't interrupt this gang's cycle of violence. Neither could the police. Nobody has yet been arrested for any of these murders. But Lee is still out on the streets. You know what I'm saying? I just come up to him. So that's why I'm out here now. I'm trying to talk to these two little brothers. They put a bug in their head. For communities like these, Lee is a rare and valuable example. He's turned away from a life of violent crime and he's trying to help others do the same. Take care too, man. All right? Yup, yup, be careful. And I know his dad. And his dad was just killed like four months ago. And I went to the funeral. You know what I mean? That's generations. How does it feel when you see them walk off like that? You've had a little chat, you've tried to plant the seeds. Yeah, I feel good. I ain't gonna lie, I feel good about those five guys there. You know what I mean? If I can get one out of the five, I mean, I wish I can get all five, but one out of five, I feel good. Mm -hmm. And I think I came through. Some good work, man. Around here, they need more people like Lee. So Lee's seen something. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.